Welcome back to Boiler House Garage. In this video I'm going to be changing the steering wheel on my 1977 Vauxhall Cavalier Mark 1. As much as I like the look of this mount the leather steering wheel and the fact that the car isn't actually heavy to steer, even though I have got 205mm wide tyres fitted, uh, it just feels a little bit weird to drive. I'm quite used to driving Opal Mantas which share the same platform as this and I've bought an Opal Manta SR B series steering wheel to replace this one with. If you've seen any of my previous videos of uh, driving this car about, you might have noticed that the steering wheel is slightly off to the right. Uh, the steering rack's actually very vague and it's a bit worn out. I do have a refurbished replacement to fit at a later date. I may as well use the fact that I'm fitting a new wheel to put the replacement on straight. So I've backed the car down and back up the driveway a couple of times just to make sure that the wheels are dead ahead. Visually you can see how many degrees the wheel is off to the right here. The first step is to remove the centre capital horn press. I haven't actually connected this because the horn itself's broken so I've just uh, left the wire with a bit of insulation tape on it. And the horn's still not fixed, uh, but saying that the new wheel I've got to go on doesn't have a horn centre, uh, so we'll leave the source one a bit later. Now we need to mark the centre of the steering column end of it uh, with a sharp heel. You can use a paint pen. Ideally if you've got some of a straight edge just so you can mark to one side of it just so you know where the dead ahead position is. Remember to mark the centre bit because that's going to remain with the car. The nut and all parts of the wheel will come away when we take it off. As there is some play in the centre point with the steering like this, I don't have to be like millimetre accurate with the forward direction. Next I'm taking a flathead screwdriver to open up the double uh, lock washer that's uh, uh, situated behind the main nut here. Ideally you should replace this but unfortunately I don't have one and don't have a chance to order one so I'm just going to try and gently pry this open without breaking off the locking tabs. You might have seen as I was trying to pry these open that this steering column as well as the centre play it's got it also has some forward and backwards play because this has a collapsible steering column the top part of which is made out of plastic and these little tabs can break off over time. You can take a 22mm socket with extension bar or perhaps I'll use this 22mm spark plug tool that might, might be a little bit easier to hold onto the wheel and the ratchet a little bit more closely. <laughs> For obvious reasons this nut is on pretty tight. some old cars you can actually uh, reattach this nut so if you just put it uh, over a couple of threads uh, you can actually pull the wheel off of the splines uh, either around the boss or the edges of the wheel but you can't do that on this particular one because there are too many splines you're trying to overcome quite a large surface area so these will only come off with a puller so I can fully remove the nut and the lock washer without fear of the steering wheel um, hitting me in the face as I, as I pull it off by hand this wheel will be harder than the original to remove with a steering puller because there's no um, opening or holes in the back of the boss so I'm going to have to use a gear puller instead and try and hold it onto the edge of the wheel itself where it attaches to the boss using these little hook ended uh, pullers. The puller kit I got is a useful like spike that can fit into the end of the centre bolt and that will just stop it coming off of the uh, column centre here. So if that popped in it keeps it nice and central. This puller is one of my favourite tools, I've used it for multiple jobs on cars over the years. Uh, steering wheels, uh, wheel bearings, uh, stub axles, the uh, half shafts. Uh, brake assemblies and I even rebuilt an entire uh, rear differential on an Opel Manta that had been welded up for a drift car so I've, I rebuilt it and uh, took it apart using this puller. 
It does have some boltable rods that come with it as well, so if you do have an original um, Mansa World Cavalier steering wheel, you can uh, put those inside the centre of the of the boss. There's like two holes at the bottom designed for a steering collar, which I'll, I'll show you when I fit the new one. Doing it that way it does make this a lot less uh, fiddly than I'm going to be experiencing here. I'm using a 17mm spanner on the end of the puller's um, push centre bolt thing. This is a lot easier if you use a, a larger ratchet or breaker bar or something, but I'm going to try it with a bit of brute force and ignorance. and she's off. So this is what the back of the boss looks like. You've got your, at the bottom here, one's power connection and at the top you have the self cancel and on the back of the boss here I didn't do much damage but you can see where the two little uh, little lugs for the um, puller were, were bedded in. It'd perhaps be better suited in a Nova or Chevette or something like that. So this is the Manta, uh, Opel Manta SR steering wheel, it would be from a uh, mid to late 70s car. Uh, it's the same platform as the Cavalier, so the boss dimensions are identical even where the self cancel is. It's just got those two holes, uh, which I mentioned earlier was for a steering puller. This is the Cavalier's original wheel, uh, so what I'll, I'll just fit this um, back on the column and just uh, show you a comparison, uh, a size comparison with the uh, Mountney Sport wheel that I've just taken off. It's actually considerably smaller than I thought. It's probably uh, three or even four inches smaller than the original. The Manta one uh, is the same size, or perhaps marginally bigger. It's pretty hard to tell because the spokes make it a little bit deceptive. In any case, it's going to make the car drive a lot nicer, and uh, it, it looks better than the stock wheel because it's got those like Elvis sunglasses uh, type of spokes on there. I do need to have a horn sensor a push button for it though, so if you do have one or know where to get one, please uh, leave a comment below. There's still a lot of grease here on the indicator self cancel and uh, the other mechanisms uh, when I uh, put this wheel on last year. So just by eye, I'm going to uh, try and level the top of the steering wheel with the red mark that I put on the centre of the uh, top part of the column. You do have to overcome the pressure of the spring that's behind it, that can be a bit of a pain, so once it is in place you have to sort of hold it there with your hands or knees uh, as you put the lock washer and nut back on just to hold it in place. Now I'm happy with where it is, I'm going to uh, get the ratchet and tighten the nut back down. Uh, I'll just do it sort of hand tight for now and then torque it down a bit harder uh, shortly after. Tighten it down harder, I'm going to use a 22mm socket on an extension bar it's just so I can get my hand all the way around it because it's a bigger wheel, I couldn't get my hand around the uh, ratchet handle I had to tighten it down harder. That's a horrible amount of play, but I have driven worse, believe me, much worse. Now that the centre nut is torqued down, if you 
uh, use a screwdriver to flatten the locking tabs over the nut just to keep it secure. As a safety precaution you can take your sharpie or paint pen and just mark a line on the tightened nut um, so it's in line with the one that we put on the uh, centre of the top part of the column uh, that way you've just got this uh, visual clue if the nut uh, does for some reason work its way undone. So in here we can see the sharpie line the original one I drew on the column and the other one uh, on the nut so you can see if that ever works loose. You've also got these two holes here that I could put the I could put the gear puller in there for the next time, keeps everything a bit closer and neater. There's even a, a GM Vauxhall specialist tool for moving steering wheels that utilises these. Now I need to temporarily tape up this 12 volt horn wire until I get the horn push for the wheel centre. Doing a neat job of this is completely optional. Time for a test drive. Let's see how close to the centre I got it and how bad that play is. Today's video is brought to you by Lens Store. If like me you're as blind as a bat but don't want to look like some specky nerd, you may already wear or wish to try contact lenses. Lens Store offer only the best quality brands including AccuView Oasis and Focus Dailies for some of the most competitive prices around. Order before 11pm and Lens Store will have it with you the next day. Orders can be made without any referral or copy of your prescription and by using my link in the description below you will get 10% off. Now back to the video. Thank you. 